titled or you're thinking of, I'm going to do uh, my five month video. And uh, I haven't done a live stream since I got this set up. I've been thinking about it, but uh, I've been busy. Good, uh, thank you. Yeah, like I said, the uh, uh, video and always well, should be excellent. Uh, I'll be, uh, I'll be concerned. Thank you. Yeah, it could be actually, uh, that is a bit suspect, but I don't have my microphone for a All right, that uh, should be better now. Had my Bluetooth speaker on and I had the air conditioner on, so it should be uh, should be much better now. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I was out here working, getting clay ready, and then uh, ran in the house because I wanted to get a snack and a drink, and I grabbed those, but I uh, don't have time to eat the snack now, so. All right, just been processing clay this morning. I haven't actually thrown anything yet, but uh, we're going to get this set up so that you guys can see the wheel and hopefully me at the same time. Won't be nearly as much me as the wheel when I'm throwing, but, uh, but that's all right. I can still see the, uh, I'll still be able to see the comments. Yeah, the gauge setup. It's really very simple. Uh, but yes, I can show you. Uh, so basically, I constructed a couple pieces of wood. So a flat uh, piece of wood here that I actually attached the uh, the vertical piece to. Uh, and then that, just to give it a little bit of strength, I did these little, uh, screwed these pieces here on the side. Uh, and then there's just a vertical piece of wood that I use. Uh, so it's just clamped to my wheel. Here with this clamp that clamps to the uh, top of the wheel and then I uh, use a wooden skewer that you would use to uh, to make a to cook a shish kebab <laughs> I use that as my gauge and then what I'm able to do is when I make my first piece I can just unclamp this and this is I'll just I'll just do it on my first one um, what I'll do is I'll throw a piece and get it the height and width that I want and then I basically set this to the gauge height and width because I can go in and out with the with the skewer and I can go up and down. And so I can get the height and width that I want. Um, and then this, like I said, it's only held together uh, uh, to the wheel with this one clamp. So it's slightly flexible down here uh, as far as moving. But once I get it set, it pretty much stays. Uh, but I just like to have it pointing pretty much to the center of the wheel head. And that helps out um, with all that, uh, with it pointing. You know, because I want it, I, I personally don't like gauges that uh, can move out of the way. Uh, some people like them where it's a paintbrush or it's one that's on a swivel. Uh, I don't like those because then if it's never, if it's not set back to the exact same point and you're really trying to make things very consistent, you're going to have an issue with that. Um, and so I think it's better just to learn to throw to a stiff gauge like this. And yes, you may hit it at times, uh, but eventually if you learn that it's stiff and you don't hit it, then you're going to be better off because it's a set gauge. Once it's set, you don't have to worry about it moving. Hey, everybody. See some comments of people saying hey from different places. So let's see. It looks like it's tilting a little bit. I'm going to lean this a little bit. There we go. All right, so I have one pound clay balls already cut up over here. I plugged some clay just a few minutes ago so that it would be ready. Um, and I'm just throwing these for uh, gas firing that I'll be doing here shortly. So let me think about the shape that I want to make. Um, yeah, I'll probably make some of my belly mugs because I don't have any of those made yet for this. 
Oh, you're welcome. I'm glad uh, you were able to make it up. Slovenia is here. Welcome, welcome. Hey, Daryl. Hope you're doing well. Good morning. So I don't, uh, most of my mugs, I don't have a size written down that I try to make them to each time. It wouldn't be a bad idea um, for uh, just consistency if somebody wants to replace a mug. But I, um, I threw production for so many years for other potters that now that I throw for myself, I don't, I don't throw a lot of things to a gauge even though I can. Uh, and I can make tons of pieces that look almost identical. Uh, I just choose not to for the most part because um, because I, I know I can. I don't have to prove that, you know, necessarily to myself. Um, uh, and like I said, those years of throwing the same thing over and over again, uh, I just kind of got to the point where I was like, you know what, I'm going to make, you know, unique pieces um, because I want to. And so... Let's see, I'm going to get a different rib here. I like to use, uh, if I'm going to make a, a, a curved mug, uh, as far as an inside curve, I can do the bottom with the straight edge, as you just saw there. But then when I go to do this inside curve of the belly mug, I like to use the rounded side of the rib. So, I'm just going to use this one. Get a ruler and check the size of this to see if it's something similar to what I want. Like I said I don't keep measurements of most of my mugs, but uh, yeah, that's almost six inches tall and uh, about three and three quarters inches wide. So that's probably good. So what I'm going to do now with my gauge. All right, so I'll try to put you here so you can see. So my gauge, you know, like I said, I can just move it. So I'm going to just pinch the clamp and then I'm going to set it so that it's, let's see, kind of like just to the edge. And I, I get it very close. I'll show you. Um, maybe upside down for a second, but I get it very close to the rim. There's probably only like an eighth of an inch between the <laughs> rim of the pot and the, uh, and the gauge. But I do that because uh, I want to get it uh, close so that I have good uh, good consistency on all the mugs uh, when I throw them, like I said. And, and I, honestly, um, is there no sound? I guess you wouldn't be able to, uh, I wouldn't be able to tell you, you wouldn't be able to respond if there was sound, if there was no sound. Okay, good. You have sound. Thank you. <laughs> I was like, without seeing my mouth moving, nobody's going to know. All right, cool. Um, so uh, one of the things is, is, as I just said, I'm, I'm not necessarily throwing, you know, to a gauge just because I, I need consistency, but uh, partially I have, I, I have this crutch that if I have a gauge, I, it's actually easier for me to throw some pieces to a gauge just because I can kind of go in autopilot. Um, it's kind of funny because I, because of throwing for years and years with a gauge and throwing production for other potters, uh, I can actually throw faster if I have the gauge. So, yeah.
Hey, Happy Potter, what weight is this clay? This is one pound of clay. Um, I plug these clay balls out of my pug mill. Uh, I have a die that I put on the end that's a three inch die because my pug mill uh, naturally uh, spits out a four inch round pug. And I have a die that I put on the end that gives, uh, <clears throat> makes it three inches around. And this clay, uh, every, at three inches around, every, uh, a three inches round pug every inch is a half a pound so I just cut all the clay balls two inches and uh, it gives me one pound of clay for these So I'm going to adjust my gauge slightly, which I which I normally do after my first mug. Usually my next one is a little bit taller, and so I'm as I guess it's just me getting in the groove of, of of figuring out what shape I want to make and and all that. But usually, and I figure if it's going to be a little bit taller consistently, I don't want to fight myself on like okay, I got to remember to make it shorter, so I'll just move my gauge after the first one. And so it wasn't much on this one, but. Uh, I'd rather, if that's the natural feel that I have for this one pound of clay for this shape, then I'd just rather go ahead and move the gauge. And then, uh, like I said, so this one, uh, height-wise, um, yeah, just a touch over, just a touch over six inches tall. If anybody has any questions, feel free to ask. Um, uh, uh, let's see. Let's see. How do I get to the chat? There it is. Cool. How thin do I make the walls in the bottom? Well, I'll tell you the best way to show you that would just be to throw one and then cut it in half. So maybe we'll do that. Coffee mugs, I don't worry about making them, uh, I don't worry about making them too thin because I figure a coffee mug is going to hold a hot beverage and it's not a bad idea to have it a little bit thicker so that it uh, can retain some of that heat. And so, uh, and somebody asked how many ounces this mug will hold when it's finished. These, this shape of mug usually holds um, about 14 ounces finished, uh, 12 to 14 ounces uh, all my mugs out of one pound of clay hold a different amount just based on the shape. So I think from at least past measurements, these hold around 12 to 14 ounces. Uh, the diameter chuck uh, was about three and three quarters at the top. Um, Spending all the time in the world shaping this one to cut it in half. <laughs> I didn't think about that. Just in the in the mode of uh, of throwing. All right, let me grab my wire. Hey, what we should do is probably we should torch this a little bit before I cut it in half, so then it will stand up, and we can leave it sitting here for everybody to see if they ask the same question. So let's do that. I'll uh, slightly spin this, and I'm going to walk around behind the wheel and grab my torch. Now it's, uh, it's a larger torch, a weed burner, so it's going to be loud for a second.
it's the same torch I used to make my larger pieces. So it's uh, a bit overkill for a coffee mug, but this will make a better representation of cutting it in half. burn my uh, my skewer there you better stop <laughs> now if anybody ever asks how I got the end of my skewer to be black I'll say well it was live streams fault all right so I'm gonna actually pull halfway underneath and then uh, and then up and hopefully it will stand because we torched it. Yeah, there we go. A little thick uh, right there at the base, just above where I would pull it from there. And the wall uh, is pretty consistent all the way up. But like I said, I could get much more height out of that with one pound of clay um just in general uh but like i said with coffee mugs i don't get too fussed over them being a little bit uh a little bit thicker so that they will retain the heat of the hot beverage that's in them so like you like i said you can see a little bit of extra thickness right there at the bottom but then the rest of the wall is pretty consistent all the way up and that's what you want to see in just about anything you make. Uh, we'll find somewhere to put this so we can show it later if anybody asks. I guess I could measure that thickness, but it looked like it was probably uh, an eighth of an inch. Uh, yeah, probably between an eighth and, uh, three sixteenths. Hey, you're welcome. Uh, what clay am I using? This clay is Hestia from High Water. Uh, and Chuck, yes, I am throwing while standing right now. I have a, uh, a one wheel that I have a leg system on that I stand up at, and then I have one wheel that's a sit-down wheel. I do a little bit of both, depending on what I'm making. If I'm in more of a... Uh, well, it used to be if I was in a production mode, I would stand 
and then otherwise I would sit. Now it's more probably based on what I'm throwing. They're just some things that I prefer uh, to sit down and throw and some things that I prefer to stand up and throw. So. Yeah, both I uh, use the clay from uh, Starworks Oakum Medium for my get uh, my wood kiln, and then I use uh, Hestia from High Water for my gas kiln. Uh, I started using the Hestia uh, before I built my wood kiln, and it might work in a wood kiln, uh, but I really like number one supporting Starworks being local right here in my backyard. Uh, and they make really good, uh, really good clays uh, that work well in my wood kiln. Uh, that clay, I've had issues with that clay with a couple of my glazes in my gas kiln. So that's the reason at the moment I'm not using it in my gas kiln, but uh, something that I would like to eventually get to one clay. I had a dry piece of clay on my hand that ended up getting on the inside there. I'll have to read that comment here in a second. I'm going to carry these two mugs over to my table and come back and look at that comment. All right, let's see. Let me go back just a little bit. Uh, Uh, two forks, how much higher could I throw one pound? Well, we could always test that, um, and I could show you. Maybe we'll do that in a minute. Um, let's see. Am I correct that you allow the mugs to dry and pop off the bats instead of wiring? Yes, Patty, that is true. Um, I have plenty of mugs over here. I actually like to put my handles on the mugs while they're still on the bat because it gives me uh, the flexibility to move them around with the bat and also they kind of they're still stuck to the bat when I put on the handles and it helps um, uh, how do you get the skirt of the clay ball pushed back into the piece so easily when it's spread out so much wider to start with um, let's see um, you mean when I open the clay ball uh, initially is that what you're referring to right Oh, two forks. Yeah, uh, well, I could I could definitely pull one pound of clay at least seven inches tall, um, I would say. Um, and a lot of times if I'm throwing vases, um, also another way that I thin out that clay for maybe a vase would be to belly out the piece more, uh, and that would make it much thinner, even if it didn't get much taller than these, these mugs. Um, when I open the clay ball for a mug, I'm not opening an too awful wide, especially for these because the bottom is not that wide. So right now I have um, like the inside where I've opened is about three, maybe three and a quarter. Uh, the overall piece is about five inches wide, but it's also undercut a little bit right here. Um, and so uh, from this point, uh, I basically take my hands on each side and I'm gonna cup it and bring it back in. Once I've done the swirl on the bottom, I'm just kind of cupping it back in like this to start it going up. And so I'm, I'm starting that beehive shape. And then the first pull I do is a combination of mainly my, uh, uh, my thumb and my forefinger on my left hand pinching together. But then this finger, my middle finger on that same hand works with it. And then my middle finger and my thumb on my right hand all kind of work together to do that first pull.
I hope that helped or answered your question. I am right-handed. So the video should be correct. I don't think it's reversed. Uh, I, I know when I've seen people do Instagram Live, <laughs> it always reverses the video. Uh, but I believe on YouTube they've got it figured out. So It's funny, you would think they would figure that out on Instagram where if you did a a live stream with a front facing camera that it wouldn't be in reverse. All right, Chuck, you're welcome. Thanks for being here. All right, I'm gonna try to uh, get you guys in a little closer. Hey, Deborah, these, uh, how tall are these? These are about um, um, a little over six inches tall. Uh, let's see. I don't have the, a really good way of getting you guys in closer unless I move the camera to my uh, um, uh, Actually, I'm gonna do that. Yep Give me a second while I move the camera. I'm gonna actually pull down my uh, My boom arm and I'm gonna put the camera on the boom arm and get you guys right in there closer and that should uh, If you if you follow me on Instagram, you probably saw a video yesterday that I posted and it was one where I used this boom arm to uh, have the camera real in there, in there, nice and tight. Of course, with that, with that video, I also had the camera in uh, um, the uh, mode where it can video a really wide angle, and so that uh, that won't be possible at the moment. But I can still get you guys in there real close. There we go. Look at that. Now, probably need to adjust it a little bit. Uh, I, it's blocking my view of my comments a little bit. I think that said, what type of wheel am I using? This is a Pacifica GT400. Let's see, hopefully you guys can see this. I believe so. Yeah, I have this Pacifica um, wheel and then I have a, uh, a Brent CXC uh, that I also throw on that is my sit down wheel. You guys wouldn't be able to get this close if you were here in person.
All right, let me take these over to my table. I don't know about perfection, but uh, lots of practice. <laughs> we'll turn that uh, just a little bit. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, me and uh, John and I threw a little bit while he was here. Uh, not a whole lot because we were doing so many other things. Uh, let me see. Um, hey, Kathleen, welcome. Yeah, I can't see. Oh, uh, from Chile, Chicago. Yeah, well, it's hot here today, so I'm, I'm, uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, this, this, uh, this, um, way I have this set up is blocking my view of the chat a little bit, so, um, I could actually turn it around in the holder. That might be nice, because I think we'll probably keep it in this, uh, in this view a little bit. So let's do this. I don't mess up the live stream while doing this. I'm going to turn it around this way, put it in the holder, and then we'll spin you guys back around. Look at that. All right. Now I'll get you guys back to where you can see. There. And now I can see chat as well. Uh, Sweet Tea Stevens, do, do I clean my wheel after each use? No, uh, I do not. Um, and that is a, that is a great practice. Um, but it is not something that I, I do. Um, like I said, it is probably a, a good idea and a great studio practice. Um, but I can't say that I do. So I'm trying to adjust this again. It was a bit close. There you go. But I clean it fairly often. Uh, how did my open studio weekends go? The, the first one went very well. Uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And then this past one, uh, it was rainy starting at 10 o'clock Saturday morning and rained all day long. So, uh, and then... Uh, Sunday was nice weather, but it was uh, equally as slow, so it was okay. Like I said, I, I had a really good weekend the first weekend, so uh, hey, there's another North Carolinian. Welcome. Uh, I have actually, I saw the previous comment about my uh, my gauge. I don't think I have a video on that, but at the uh, at the beginning of this live stream, somebody asked about it, and so I did explain how it works. Um, so when this finishes, you should be able to go back and watch this because it will post to my YouTube channel and you can actually go back and watch my explanation of the gauge, um, when this is over. This one got a little wobble to it. Uh, do I use a mirror while I throw? I never have the times that I, I have thrown at a wheel before that had a mirror, and it was very disorienting for me. I didn't, I didn't like it or prefer it at all. I, uh, I just prefer to throw based on what I see, and if I need a better view of it, I just kind of step back and, uh, and look at things. Uh, yeah, throwing with a mirror was just like, yeah, not, not my thing. I'm sure if I wanted to, I could get used to it, but it just wasn't, uh... Wasn't something I preferred at the time.
those last two comments came in quickly in succession, so I'll have to uh, have to check those here in a second. If anybody asks a question that is easily answerable by any of you in chat who know the answer, feel free to answer it. But uh, Yeah, I hope you guys, if you were here for any of the live streams of the wood firing, I hope you enjoyed those. Um, you know, John and I definitely had a lot of fun during that time, and I'm very thankful for Danielle uh, being the narrator for several parts of that, because I knew there were parts of it that I could not talk much during the live stream because of the focus that it takes to make sure the wood firing goes well. But... Uh, I know lots of people were very thankful that she took the time to narrate. All right, let me see what the uh, those couple comments were. Uh, what do uh, what do you do with the hydrated clay that is hard, uh, dehydrated clay that is hard to work with? Um, I actually uh, take any clay that's in my splash pan when I'm done throwing. I keep buckets of clay that I pour water on, and then I will um, reclaim that by setting it out, setting it out on a piece of a big piece of plywood. I don't have a big piece of plaster, but I'll put it out, and then I've, as it stiffens, I'll bag it up and then just run it back through my pug mill. So. Can I show how I center my clay? Yeah, I'll definitely, uh, maybe I'll talk a little bit more about that. You're welcome, Kathleen. I'm just scrolling through the comments here. Uh, <laughs> you enjoyed the look on my uh, terror on my face, yeah. Uh, yeah, those mugs, they're still here. I haven't, they haven't been picked up yet, but, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, these bats are, uh, not commercially available. They were ones I had made by somebody local, and that guy has since, uh, quit making the bats, uh, retired. Um, I need to see if I can get a hold of him to find out where he got the material, because I have not been able to find the same material, um, to make anymore, but... Uh, yeah, as far as centering, that's, I mean, <laughs> it's really hard to explain, I guess. Uh, I, one of the things that, you know, that I do is uh, brace my arms on the splash pan. Uh, I can show you, one of the things I always do when I show people for this size clay ball, you can see my hands where I'm applying pressure because you can see where the clay is built up and where it's kind of worn off. So I'm using my pinky finger all the way up around the, the heel of my hand and then just a little bit on this finger as well. And on this hand, it's mainly just this area of, of my fingers right here where I'm kind of pinching like this. But that's based on the size of my hands as well. Uh, and depending on which what size clay ball I'm using, and then I'm also using my thumb on my right hand to push down on the top of the clay ball as I'm throwing. So you can see this hand kind of goes in here like this, cupping, and then this hand kind of does these two fingers and my thumb on top and then bracing them. And then I also have uh, at my stand-up wheel, I have my right foot on the foot pedal, my left foot is kind of pushed back so that I kind of lean into it. And then when I go to open the clay ball, I'm using my thumb on my left hand. And I'm always, t if I can, I'm always touching my hands together just as a good practice to keep my hands steady. Um, it's just a really good practice uh, during throwing in, in any way, if you can keep your hands close or touching and then if your hands aren't braced on the splash pan keep your elbows tucked in close to your body that will help you with uh, centering and pulling but if you can like I said I use the steadiness of the splash pan to really help I hope that helps I know that's uh, if I was teaching a class in person 
I could definitely give a lot more tips watching somebody center or attempt to center and then adjusting what they're doing. You're welcome. I know I have shown, uh, talked about the foot that I put on a lot of pieces before, but I'll, I'll try to show that a little bit better on this one. Uh, probably going to lower the camera a little bit so that uh, you can see when I work on that foot. There we go. You're welcome. Thank you for being here. So like I said, I, I got you guys <clears throat> positioned a lot lower and closer there so that we can, uh, when I get to the portion where I make that little foot, I can show you a little bit better how I, how I make the foot on pretty much any piece uh, that has this, um, if the, if the, if the base of the piece kind of ends up curving in, I like to put a little foot at the base. But if it's curving out at the bottom, I do a little bit of a roll instead of a instead of what I'm doing on these pieces. All right. So the first thing I do to start off um, is I take my tool and I I trim away that extra clay that's right there. From, from pulling, so just so I can start a, start with kind of a straight up and down. It's still curved out a little bit. Um, and then by shaping, I'm gonna uh, just push in with my rib and then, and then push out to start that belly at the base. So I don't start out with that foot actually being there. It kind of actually just goes straight down to the wheel. And then what I'm gonna do this time when I go, I'm gonna I'm actually going to hold the, the rib up a little bit off the bat and then I'm going to push in and that's going to allow some of that clay that's right there to actually like protrude out more so than what I've pushed in. So I'm going to, and I'm still supporting it on the inside with my left hand, which you can't see, but I'm going to lift up the, the, the rib and then just push in and you see that clay just kind of pop out right there at the base. And then I'm going to finish my shape with that clay sitting there. I'm working on the top now, like I said, which I know you, you can't see. And then what I do to finish that, because right now it's kind of just a, a sharp point and there's a little extra clay on the bat as well. I'm actually gonna take the point of the rib and I'm gonna take my, my left hand is gonna come in here like this and I'm gonna use my middle finger to kind of round that. And then I'm gonna take the, the rib to kind of clean off around the wheel and then also to kind of I like move it back and forth like this to kind of help round that little foot at the base and then once I clean away the excess water you can see I've got that little rounded foot there I think it's just a great way to finish off the base of a piece that comes in like that uh, it gives a great place to glaze to it gives a great thing to hold on to if you're holding it upside down for dipping in glaze uh, all kinds of, uh, as well as just having a finished look to the piece.
I believe we're a little bit crooked there, but. All right, sorry, I saw some comments there. Okay, yeah, Aaron, yeah, that definitely is what you would have to do as far as this material, because you can buy an eighth inch uh, thick version of this masonite that's smooth on one side. You would just have to glue the two rough sides together and then cut them to size. Yes, that's what you would have to do. Yeah. You're welcome, Kathleen. Yeah, they, they used to make this product uh, that's smooth on both sides, but the, the application for it is, is not really needed because if it's used in any kind of construction, you would rarely need something that's smooth on both sides. And so they don't really have a big reason to finish both sides of this masonite or hardboard product. Um, I mean, I've heard it's still available out there in places, but like I said, it's, I haven't been able to find it myself. Hey, Alex, good job. Congratulations on the new wheel. Yeah, going to the larger wheel head is, is really nice. Uh, that's something I have a uh, an old Brent Model A that has like a 12-inch a wheel head. And uh, going to a bigger wheel head was, was very nice uh, for just having the... Especially if throwing on these round bats like this, I believe they are... Uh, let's see... Yeah, they're, they're like 12 and a half corner to corner. So if I put these on that 12-inch that wheel head, these little points would stick off the edge. So if your hand ever went down beside the wheel head, uh, I haven't thrown on that wheel in a long time, but I, I was pretty sure I remembered hitting my hand on those every once in a while. And it's not, uh, not necessarily fun. Yeah, Alex, uh, yeah, I, I believe all of the clay companies are a little behind because they got hit so hard once everybody that was doing pottery more as a hobby um, couldn't go to their, <laughs> you know, uh, art centers to, to make work, you know, last year. Everybody was like, ooh, that, at least the, the ones that had the expendable income said, oh, I'm just going to buy my own wheel and kiln. And so they got back ordered pretty quick.
uh, what type of thickness for bats. Uh, I, definitely, most bat pins are uh, stand up off the wheel head about a quarter of an inch. So I think bats need to be at least a quarter of an inch thick. Um, that way that the, the, bat, the, the bat pins are, you know, at least level or slightly below uh, the height. You don't want those really sticking up above the wheel, uh, above the bat. That would be, that could be dangerous for your tools or your fingers, all that kind of thing. All right, I'm gonna put you guys back on the other tripod for the last few minutes here and maybe get a different angle. Um, I can't stay on too awful long today because we have uh, kids that have to go to doctor's appointments and things like that. But uh, let's see. Get you guys out of there. And back into this one. And maybe see about uh, having you guys come around this side. Another, another angle here for the last few minutes, like I said. Um, hey, Janet, was I pleased with the out uh, yeah, live sales? Yes, yeah. The first weekend was very good. Um, thank you, Amanda. I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun uh, with John working with him, and he's definitely going to be back. We've talked about it since, so. I, um, I'm considering the idea of a wood fire workshop. Don't know if that's something that I'm going to do yet or not, but, uh, um, definitely thinking about it and talking about it, trying to figure out if it's something that I'd be willing to do, you know, it'd definitely be a paid workshop, uh, and space would be very limited. It would probably be only be for maybe six people. Um, and, uh, Oh, thank you, Stormy. Take care. So, it's something I'm thinking about, um, but it's something I really have to consider because it, I would be giving up half the space in my kiln for a firing. And, uh, yeah, just a lot, a lot to think about that goes into that. But there's not that many options out there for people to wood fire if they're not... Uh, if there's not workshops, um, you know, because I have a kind of a set crew, um, and it's nice to have those people that are familiar. Um, but like I said, with the limited availability of just wood kilns in general uh, around the country, but like I said, it would it wouldn't <laughs> it wouldn't necessarily be cheap either because uh, the amount of like I said time and energy that goes into preparation as well as just having the kiln in general and sacrificing the space in the kiln. Hopefully my head's not too much in the way from that angle. I know I lean that direction so I tried to adjust my stance a little bit so that you could see. <laughs> I don't know if I can zoom or not with this. Oh, yeah, I can. Look at that. Yeah, Alex, it is. Uh, um, I love the challenge of making bigger pieces. Um, it is. Uh, it's fun. 
It definitely is. <laughs> yeah, thankfully I have hair left on my head. <laughs> nope, not going bald. I got, uh, you know, if you look at me from the front, it's going back a little bit in a couple places, but no, I'm not losing it on top or anything yet. Thankfully, my my grandpa that I favor the most as far as looks, he had a full head of hair at, you know, in his 80s, so. But either way, I'm fine, it's just hair. a little something either on that bat or in the clay hmm. I think it resolved itself so we're good zoom back out I'll show you guys um, quickly the uh... hey I'm in uh, Seagrove North Carolina this started to slouch a little bit but this is one earlier that I cut in half so that you so that uh, we could show the thickness and like I said I, my goal with coffee mugs is not necessarily to make them the thinnest thing but to uh, even thickness is definitely the best for any piece, but uh, I uh, could pull a little bit more right there, but then again, too, at the base, the way I make that foot, it actually makes it a little bit thicker by pushing in the clay there, so I don't mind having that little bit of thickness there. Let's see, I'm going to take you guys off of the stand for a second so I can look at the comments, and then... Uh, Show you guys a couple of things and then we'll end it. Yeah, Alex, let me know. Where are you located, Alex? Uh, Ed, how long do I let them dry before putting handles on? Well, uh, let's see. I can... Uh, um, let me turn the camera around. Uh, these I made yesterday uh, and covered them up. And so these are about ready for handles. So that's what I'm going to do when we hang up. Uh, when I end the live stream is, is go ahead and put handles on these. So the tops are still leather hard. So you can see I made a little indention with my thumbnail there. Bottoms are still fairly soft, but I'm keeping them covered. Um, so I made those yesterday. Those are the ones we just made here on the live stream. I made these last night, so they're a bit more wet, but I've had them uncovered this morning so that they could start drying a bit more so I could put handles on these. And then I also made these last night, uh, and those are going to be carved mugs, so that's the reason I've cut those off. I have them sitting upside down. Those have to dry a bit more before I carve them, and then I have to put the handles on uh, after I carve them. Um, let me look at the comments again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Sheila, uh, uh, as far as my setup, yeah, uh, I do have, um, here's my Manfrotto tripod uh, with the uh, cell phone holder on top. There's a messy table behind. There's uh, my microphone, which I didn't have that microphone plugged in today because I had to have my phone charging. 
but that is a great, uh, these are expensive uh, um, tripods, but I have really like this one. So Manfrotto is the name of the brand. Um, here's uh, one of my box lights. That's a Neewer light with a stand. That's all I had today. And then um, in the ceiling, I have um, these uh, these arms that I install, or these uh, bars that I install that have my uh, boom arms on them. So I have one there for a microphone and this one here has a cell phone holder on it as well so that I can actually, that's how I had it earlier with that, uh, right, because then I can get the camera like right down in here. If you follow me on Instagram, you probably saw a video yesterday, and that's how I did that. Oh, great, you're watching from a high school ceramics class. Awesome, Colin. Yeah, let me flip the camera back around. Do, uh, do you do workshops in the kiln building? Um, I haven't done any workshops. Um, um, Carmine or Carmine, sorry. Um, uh, but, uh, I actually was talking earlier that I'm considering doing a wood fire workshop, but I just, uh, there's a lot of things to consider before I decide for sure if I'm going to do that. Um, so it's just some things I'm thinking about, but, uh, haven't decided yet. I'm going to put this back in here so y'all don't get seasick. Um, uh, Manfrotto, F M A N F R O T O, I believe, or it might be two T's in the Frodo. Um, but yeah, you can find them on, uh, Amazon. Can I throw one as fast as possible? Uh, yeah, I might be able to do that. Maybe we'll end that way. Um, yeah, I've considered doing, um, work. I actually, last year was a year that I wanted to start entertaining the idea of doing workshops elsewhere as well. Um, but, um, you know, with COVID, it just didn't happen. So, what's up, Mr. Moreno? <laughs> Thanks for being a, 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 an art teacher. My, mine has been a huge influence on me and I'm very thankful for good art teachers. Hey, John. Uh, if you just got here, we're getting ready to end, so sorry. <laughs> um, how do I keep from losing height when I belly out the mug? Basically, I'm I'm bellying and kind of like pulling at the same time uh, is, uh, is how that happens, uh, Mark. All right, so I'll throw one more as fast as I can. How's that? And then we'll end it after that because... Like I said, I gotta uh, get off so that we can uh, do some do the dentist appointment and a couple other things for for kids. Oh, get my pedal back where it's supposed to go. All righty, get your stopwatches ready. Now, it also depends on whether you're talking about as fast as you can uh, and be a really good mug or just a mug as fast as I can. That would be two different things. So, There we go. Not as pretty as the others, but there's a fast mug for you. <laughs> and there's a little bit of water in the bottom of that I should have got out. Like I said, not necessarily always my goal to go as fast as I can, but uh, yeah, it's one, one pound of clay. Uh, yeah, I, I had... Uh, practiced at one point about seeing if I could throw mugs without stopping the wheel. Um, and there is a shape that I can do that with. I mean, they're not nice mugs, but it was at one point they were talking about doing a, uh, 41 and a half seconds. That's crazy. That's even crazy to me. So, um, you're welcome. Sea wave. Hey, Kevin.
welcome. Well, like I said, I'm getting ready to uh, sign off for today, but I uh, wanted to, to check the live stream with my new Wi-Fi, and I had some mugs to throw anyway, and uh, I didn't have a video prepared yet uh, for this week, and I thought it would be nice to do a live stream and, uh, uh, you know, let you guys come in and, and just like I said, check the quality of the live stream now that I have the new Wi-Fi. Uh, because if that is uh, a better possibility in the future and we didn't lose any connection that I could tell that was a problem in the past that I hated um, and uh, you know really stunk to have poor connection while doing a live stream so yeah you're welcome come on all right you guys have a great day and uh, um, like I said if uh, if you watched my last video uh, just remember, if somebody's special in your life, please let them know uh, that they're special to you. Be good to those that are that you love. And, uh, yeah, thank you guys, as always, for being here. And, yeah, time to go do dad stuff and uh, put some handles on mugs. So you guys have a good one. Thank you so much. Bye.